Hi everybody and welcome to our YouTube channel. I'm Rachel from The Fold Line and I'm here today to talk through with you all the patterns that were featured on the Sewing Bee episode um, number seven last night. Now, for most of you who are regular followers of our channel, you'll know that it's normally Kate who does the videos. Now, she's on holiday this week, so I've decided that um, I will do the video instead. I'm much more comfortable with spreadsheets rather than filming myself, so please bear with me and hopefully I'll be able to get through um, all, showing you all the patterns that were on the TV show last night. Now, the first challenge was to make a underwired bra and matching knicker set. Now, I'm just going to be looking over at my computer just to make sure that I have got all the information um, that I need to tell you about with these patterns. So this is quite a tricky challenge, I think, for the contestants, mainly because it's small bits of fabric and they can easily be stretched out. Um, so the pattern that we think is the best match um, for an underwired bra is the Cosmo bra by Fit to You. Now this has got the same sort of three piece cup structure. It's underwired and it's got thin straps that go over your shoulders. Now, um, you can make this pattern with or without underwiring, which is really handy. And it comes in sizes UK 30 to 46 and cups A to H. And I'm going to show you some photos as I'm chatting um, so that you can see what it looks like on different models. But this is a really nice bra pattern. And with all the different variations that you can make, you know, you can really make it your own and custom fit it um, to you. You can make it from more stretchy fabrics or something structured and there's a lace option too so you can really copy what you saw on the sewing bee. Uh, and the matching knicker set, what we thought was um, a good match for this is the Trixie briefs from Jennifer Lauren Handmade. So these are quite simple knickers and um, they come in sizes 6 to 24. And so you can wear them every day. And then also it's a really quick project and to use up any fabric scraps that you've got. So they, it's a quite high rise um, at the back, co completely cover your bottom. Um, they come in two different variations. One that's very high on the waist, sort of vintage style looking, and then a lower rise one as well. And they're elastic around the waist um, and the legs as well, um, you know, you can make it very simple or you can add in some lace if you want to as well. Now the other knicker option that we've got um, is the iris knickers from Tilly and the Buttons. Now these um, come in a bigger size range, either UK 6 to 24 or 16 to 34. These are perfect for beginners because Tilly has really good instructions to take you completely step by step um, for every stage of the making process. So if you are new to sewing, you've been inspired by the sewing bee, then this is a really good place to start if you're inspired by uh, lingerie week. So you can make a whopping 36 combinations using this pattern. Different thigh kind of heights, different waist heights, adding lace, not adding lace. So it's a really versatile pattern. Now the um, second challenge was to upcycle thermals into something more wearable. Now I'm not I'm gonna be honest, I think thermals are meant to be worn onto your clothes and that's probably where they're best to stay. Um, there were a couple of good makes from the this transformation challenge, but I think I'm not sure it was that successful to be honest. So um, I'm gonna leave it there and move on to the last challenge. So the final one was to make luxury pyjamas for men. Now, you think pyjamas, oh, this would be quite easy, but actually if you're making really luxurious versions and using a lot of piping, maybe some slippery fabrics, then it is quite a difficult challenge. Um, and I think we could tell that from the contestants too, that sometimes the finish, because of the time constraints, wasn't maybe as good as they would have liked it to have been. So, when I first watched um, this part of the show last night, I thought, oh, I just don't know how I'm gonna tell which pattern's which, because actually most of them were really, really similar. Um, apart from Jill's, hers was quite different. Um, but I went back and had a look at like the sort of closer details of what the different contestants used. And that really helped me to work out, you know, which was which. 
So I'm going to run through you now which patterns I think each contestant used. So first up we've got Annie and she was inspired by ASAP Rocky and she did a long sleeve shirt with um, short trousers, uh, shorts sorry. Um, and we think this pattern was the Berber style 2691. So it had quite an open but small collar at the top and she did pipe black contrast piping all the way around. She had a really nice fabric, but as I already mentioned, she struggled to get kind of a good finish. It was sort of riding up a bit of the front, the shirt was, and the hemline of the, tra uh, the shorts was a little bit wavy as well. Um, so I think she struggled a little bit, but the fabric she chose was really nice. And uh, next up is Deborah. Now she was inspired by uh, Noel Coward. And we think she used the Simplicity 1504. Now, just looking at her line drawing, this had like um, quite a big rounded collar and the buttons were done all the way up to the neckline. Now, the fabric that she used was the Duchess satin and I think Patrick felt that it was a bit too structured for luxury pyjamas, but it did have a nice overall um, look to it. She, um, I think, hacked the pattern by just doing short sleeves for shirt and doing shorts instead of trousers as well. And next up is Man Yi, and this was really impressive. So she was inspired by her dad um, to make these luxury pyjamas, and she did um, blue fabric with contrast white piping around the cuffs of the shirt and the trousers, um, and then the actual cuffs themselves were made from red fabric. So very jubilee inspired um, the timing of it. Um, she also did um, a little patch pocket on the shirt and it had a lovely little applique sewing bee, which I thought was a really nice touch. And they did look really luxurious and both of the judges really liked them. Um, so I, I don't think it's surprised that she got so much good feedback from them because it was really impressive in the time frame. And then next is Brogan and she used this sort of cheese plant inspired fabric um, it was bright green with lots of leaves all over it and the judges weren't so keen on this although i thought it was pretty well made they felt that it looked a bit too much like a tropical kind of beach set um, which i think was a bit of a shame for her because she put a lot of effort into it now we think this was the vogue 8964 um, and to start with i was like i'm just not sure how i can tell this one apart from the other shirts but the, tra um, the shorts that she used had a fly button front and that's how I was able to work out that it was the Vogue pattern. Um, so I thought she did quite well, but I think the judge is less so. Now, next is Jill. Now, this was the easiest pattern to find because it was so different to the other ones. And we think this was the Simplicity 9218. So it was a loose fitting tunic that had a button placket that came up to the top. Uh, and she also did length, um, ankle length trousers um, that went with it as well. Now Jill did struggle um, with the finish on these, which was a shame because it was nice to see something a little bit different to, uh, to the other contestants. And then finally, we have uh, Christian. Now he um, did satin pyjamas, really lovely fabric, um, and he did quite a bright contrasting turquoise pocket and collar to go with it. Um, and I was able to find this pattern because the piping that goes round the collar at the neckline, um, it just basically continues around both of the um, kind of collar pieces. It sort of sits quite flat, but I was, that was the way I was able to find that pattern um, and distinguish it from the other ones. So that um, is all of the um, patterns for the contestants. Um, Hopefully those are the right ones, but if you spotted something that we didn't, then please let us know in the comments below. And uh, I think it was a good episode, although I felt like they didn't really have enough time for the first and third challenge, which has sort of been a theme, I think, throughout the series so far, particularly last week. Um, it was quite challenging, and I think we were able to see some of the contestants have really come on in the same. So it was really fun to watch, and we hope you enjoyed it too. So I also thought um, while I'm here, before I disappear back to behind um, my spreadsheets, that I'd show you what I've been sewing um, in the last month. 
So in July, fingers crossed, um, we'll be going on holiday, which feels like it's the first time in forever. So I feel very fortunate to be doing that. Um, and so I wanted to make some clothes um, for going on holiday. So uh, one of the things that I've, been, I've made um, are these trousers, which you can recognize maybe by the pocket, which I'm gonna give you a better view of those. There. So these are the Palisade pants by um, Paper Cut Patterns. Now I've wanted to make these for ages. And what I'm doing at the moment is just going through my stash, looking what fabric I've got and thinking, what pattern have I wanted to make for a long time that that'd be a good fit for? So this fabric got several years ago when Kate and I went to a um, sewing show in Paris for the day. And if you can see it closely, it's kind of, it's got sort of a viscose weight to it, but a denim look to it. It's really, really lovely. Um, and I thought it would be perfect for a pair of summer trousers. And I really enjoy this pattern because it's such an unusual design with the pockets at the side. So they overlap um, with each other and then it's gathered around the waist. So the only major change that I made was the waistband, I think normally is about twice as high as this. And I felt for me, because I'm not that tall, that it would be too thick around the waistband, um, sorry, too thick around the waist. So I halved um, the waistband and made it an inch instead, and I think that suits my body shape better. Um, but the instructions were really good, it came together really well, I didn't really have to make any fitting changes to trousers, which I was really surprised by. Um, but some of the details that I really like, is that all of the seams are kind of pressed flat and then top stitched down. Um, and this just gives them a much nicer finish. So I'm really pleased with these and I'm looking forward to wearing those hopefully on holiday. And the other thing that I'm in the middle of making at the moment, let me bring this over, is the Olya shirt. Um, and I'm making the shirt dress version. That's from Paper Cut Patterns. Um, sorry, Paper, that's from Paper Theory Patterns, sorry. And I've made life really difficult for myself um, by doing it in striped fabric. So the really nice part of this design that I like is that it's got such an unusual construction. So the top part of the shirt, so this is the shoulder bit I'm holding here, down the sleeve, as you can see, is a different pattern piece to the lower part of the shirt. And so I've been able to do my stripe horizontal here and then it'll be vertical below. And that means obviously a lot of stripe matching. I mean, I think it took me over an afternoon just to cut the pattern pieces out. And then you'll see it's got these pockets um, over the breast um, part here. And of course I had to pattern match those as well. So as you can see, I've done a pretty good job there, I hope, uh, when it comes together. So that also, a lot of fiddly cutting out. Um, and then the button placket that runs down the front, obviously I had to cut that out so that when I stitch it, we'll have the right distance between the stripes. I mean, this has been quite the project, but I'm really excited for when it's going to be finished. I think it'll be lovely to wear on holiday. Um, it's made, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, it's made from this um, lovely drapey crepe fabric, which I got again ages ago. Um, let me just show you the other bit I've done, which is the nice kind of placket um, part at the, at the end of the sleeve. So yes, really excited to finish this, although I still think it's going to be quite a while before I do because it's, it's, I've not made life easy for myself, as I've said. But I'm really enjoying sewing those. Um, so, and it'd be great to hear what you've been sewing recently. Um, but other than that, that's it from me. You'll be pleased to know that next week Kate will be back um, and uh, normal service will resume when it comes to the Zone B and all our other videos. But thank you very much for um, listening and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the Zone B series and we'll be back soon with some more videos.